This is Susan Bradley for AskWoody.com, and here is the easiest way, I think, to get to 2OH2. So the first thing I do is I go to what's called the Windows 10 ISO site. And you can Google, and I will give you the link, and I prefer this method because of the control it gives to me. So I'll show you how to get there. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the 2OH2 version that we're, uh, is currently out is going to be replaced soon in either April or May by the 21H1 version. So when it gets close to when the next feature release is coming out, that's when I decide to move to make sure that all my machines are on that current version. So to recap, 21H1 is going to be coming out in either April or May. So therefore, I recommend that you go be on the 20H2. So then what I do is I Google out and I just look for Windows 10 ISO. And usually the very first link that I find is the download page. So I'll click there. And then what I do is when I'm on the machine I want to update, I click on, click on update now. And I'll show you how easy it is. So here's a sample machine that's on 1909. This is a home version. And again, what I do is I go out to the download site. I come down here and I click on update now. And it downloads a little tiny program, and I click on Open File. And it prompts up a UAC, so I say yes. And then it goes through and it checks my system to make sure that it's ready for the next version. And I go ahead and say Update Now. And it's checking to make sure my CPU can match, my memory, and my disk space. Now for some, as you well know, I have a, a Acer 32 gig little tiny laptop and for that one I have to jump through some major hoops. I have to put it on an external hard drive to get that up there. But on this one, we're good to go. And as you can see, it just started to download. Now this is the part that you can actually just walk away and just kind of, you know, keep a little eye on it, let it do its thing. Um, you can like do other tasks, watch TV, clean the house. Depending on your hard drive, this is either going to be extremely fast or extremely slow. So um, your internet speed will get, make this fast. If you have an SSD, that'll make it faster. So all of your, this is the part that external things make this either go really slow or really fast. And I'm not going to let it record this entire process because that would be a little boring, but you kind of get the idea that, that this part, you just let it download its thing. The next section in the process, it's going to verify the download. Again, it's just making sure that it's downloaded a proper version of the ISO. If everything looks okay, it's going to go on to the next step. Again, I'll pause this because otherwise it gets a little boring. So now it's doing the actual updating of Windows 10. Uh, the feature release, I should say. And again, you can go and do something else and just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, again, depending on the speed of your hard drive. And um, this one in particular is more dependent on the speed of your hard drive than, than the internet connection. So this can go either somewhat quickly or not so quickly if you've got an older SATA hard drive. Uh, for Windows 10 in particular, I really, really, really recommend doing an SSD drive and not doing a SATA drive. Trust me, you, you'll be much more, um, love much more of the Windows update process if you have an SSD drive than if you have a SATA drive. When you get up into the 70-ish percent um, installation part, sometimes it'll like sit there for a while and take much longer in this section. Um, bottom line, don't panic, just let it go. This is... Normal, I see this on a lot of machines, so it's do, it's doing like re-indexing in the background. And by the way, I've seen this down in the corner. See this little icon down here? Now normally this, this stands for your machine needs to be rebooted. But I've seen this now 
advertise, let's see if I can get it to show up. Your version of Windows 10 will reach end of service soon. Click to download a new version of Windows 10 to stay supported. I've literally seen machines that are on 1909. I saw a Dell laptop the other day that had that same icon down here. And when I clicked to follow the instructions, 201, I can never say it, 20H1 never came down. So you will find machines out there, laptops in particular, that no matter what you do, look like they're fine. You think they're fine. They, I know they'll be fine getting up on the later versions, and they just are not offered up the later feature releases. I wish in the future that Microsoft would have a much, much easier graphical, some kind of diagnost, diagnostic device or information that would say, hey, the reason why you're not being offered the next feature release is because of, and then fill in the blank of exactly why. Because some of these machines I've seen, it's literally not obvious. And when you go through the process of using the Windows download or the Update Now button, they work just fine. So I'm hoping in the future that Microsoft will give a better diagnostic of exactly why machines are not getting the later feature releases. So now you come to the point where it wants to reboot. Now it will reboot automatically in 30 minutes, but I always just say, Go ahead and do it. And I let it reboot. And usually about this time I go, okay, you're gonna reboot. Come on, do it. And if it doesn't, I just come over here and restart. And this will do a couple of reboots, and that's normal. And again, just let it do its thing. And it should come back and say, you'll see it says waiting on updates, don't turn off your PC, it'll take a while, and it'll reboot several times. Now this part is a bit like watching paint dry because it does take a little bit of time. Needless to say, I've paused the video so you didn't have to watch it in real time. But as you can see, it's counting up. And now you come to the slightly annoying part of the operation where Windows 10 says, we're almost done. We just have a few things. This might take several minutes don't turn off your PC and you're like, yeah, 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 get to the, get to the point where I can log in. So again, be a little more patient. We're almost done. And there we go. We're on the latest version. Now, here comes the next step because we want to make sure that we stay on this version and don't go up to the next feature released right away. There's a registry key that I want you to put in. And again, that's all you need to do to get up to the next release.